The build series is officially starting. I get to turn the very first bolt on this bike. You have no idea how impatient I am when it comes to that. I just want to tear into everything right away. So to all of you, cheers. I'm drinking a Lining Kugel Summer Shandy. If you haven't had it, it's phenomenal. Cheers to all of you fans. Cheers to all of you that support my channel. And uh, thank you so much for watching. Let's get this started. First line of business is get this up on the stand so I can remove the rear wheel and uh, get everything off of that hub so I can take it in and have it powder coated. It's a beautiful day out today, so I pulled the lift out. I need to clean all the grungy, nasty stuff off. I'm gonna scrub it, hose it down, and dry it really well before I put the bike up on here. All right, so I did confirm that the oil cooler uh, that I ordered does fit. It's actually an improved design, but it does bolt right up, which is phenomenal. Um, I taped off the ports because I don't want any water getting in there while I have the hose out and I'm washing the lift I'm going to wash all the fins and get it completely cleaned up because as you can tell there are some pieces of crud and maybe harder to tell on camera but there's crud and stuff stuck all in there all right the lift is completely wiped down and dry I got it as clean as I could it actually looks really nice uh, one thing I wanted to mention was if you look down in here, there are grease points on all the sides, all the pivoting points. There's some right there and up front. So I greased all those, topped off the cylinder here. This is how you service the cylinder. You put some uh, hydraulic fluid in there and make sure you uh, get rid of all the bubbles in there. That keeps this in tip top shape. Also, I washed the fins and straightened out a couple of them and pulled all the little rocks out with picks that didn't come out, I just have to pull the tape off and she's ready to be installed. The front tire on this is a bit skinny, so the wheel chalk doesn't hold this as well as I'd like it to. It was a little bit shaky, I could have left it on there, but I did decide to ratchet down the front end and then I used my scissor jack underneath here and then I was able to move this um, center stand down and I can lower down the jack. What that's gonna do is give me a couple of points of contact, including this, and when I'm servicing and removing the rear wheel, this is going to be off for a while while uh, Cognito Moto and my powder coater do their thing. Um, and then I can start working on the rest of the bike. So let's uh, pull this off and then I'll start disassembling the rear wheel assembly. So my initial idea was to replace the oil cooler, uh, put the proper amount of oil and do an oil change and then fill it up with fuel and see if it fires up. Now, the only issue with that is uh, one, I have to remove the exhaust and this crash bar in order to get uh, the oil cooler out. That's gonna be a little bit of work. And then the fuel tank looks like crud inside. I'm not sure if they try to line it or what the deal is. Now I am gonna take the risk and uh, run it like that. I'm gonna fill it up with fuel and hopefully I don't gunk up the carbs. I typically don't like doing that, but I really wanna know if the bike runs and if there's any other issues. I was gonna do all that first. However, Cognito Moto already started building the pieces for the front end conversion and they really need this hub um, in order for them to lace the brand new rear wheel to it. And uh, what I need to do is get in here, pull this wheel and tire, pull the brakes off, the sprocket, the lace, unlace the wheel, um, and then get the bearings and seals and everything out. I gotta send this to the powder coater, and then as soon as he's done, I gotta ship it out to those folks so they can get me all the parts so I can continue to build. In order to pull the wheel, I have to undo the axle. There is a bolt and a nut here and unfortunately the exhaust is too close and I need to take these guys off anyways. Um, so this is held on by one clamp here and then the bracket um, here has two bolts on the actual muffler and then there's a bolt up here. I'll be taking this bolt off for each side and then this clamp and then the mufflers can come off and I can service the rear end a lot easier. And there you go, the mufflers are off and obviously I have the wheel out as well. Make sure whenever you pull the axle, um, you put the spacers on where they're supposed to go in the correct orientation with the washers and all that stuff. If you don't have a service manual, um, I would suggest keeping track of how everything came apart. The passenger foot pegs also came off with the mufflers because they sit out here and the muffler bracket sits back here. I will not be using these possibly to mount the new exhaust. Um, however, I'm just gonna leave this for now. Uh, the adjusters stay on for now and then this entire assembly needs to come out 
you can tell the fender is huge and I can't pull this tire out. So I'm gonna drop this unit out of here in order to bring this down and out. Sometimes there is a axle sleeve that sits in the center between the two bearings. That, that'll have to come out as well. Pry it right there and the whole thing just kind of comes out. So pretty easy, that's out. Uh, these you have to use either a special puller for or I'll show you how to get it out if you don't have one. I'm not reusing these bearings, but I do have to make sure that uh, this aluminum surface here isn't damaged when I pull these. Um, and that way I can press the new bearings in after this is powder coated. Now the sprocket side is really simple as well. You have five nuts holding the sprocket on. They come right off, super easy. And we're gonna put our seal puller in here and pull the seal on the side as well. There's that. So the only thing that's really left on this side besides pulling the sprocket is we have um, bearings on both sides. I do have a tool that I made for removing bearings. Um, if you don't have a puller handy, it looks something like this. And it's just a massive uh, axle actually from a forklift I think that I used. And then you insert it in there and pound the bearings out. This bearing has to come out this way. The other bearing has to come out the other way. You can actually use a small punch and reach through one to punch the other one out, but you just gotta be really careful that it comes out straight and not crooked because you can mar this um, area right in here. Okay, if not, then you use a bearing puller. It goes inside here and presses against this uh, surface out here, and then the, the teeth go in here, grab this, and then pull it right out. All right, sprocket's off, and I did wanna mention something in here. Um, before you pull these bearings out, I don't know if you can tell, it's pretty rusty in here. Water got in, it looks like. There is a C-clip right inside here in this lip. You can see it right there. And that C-clip needs to be pressed or compressed and then pulled out. Otherwise, if you pound on that, it'll bend and mar all this up. So you can tell where the holes are. There's one right there and one over here. And uh, you need a uh, C-clip remover. It's essentially a plier with very thin needle nose ends on it and uh, you press those in pull these out. Make sure you save those as well because you're gonna need to either replace or reuse them when you press the new bearings in. Here's a tool that you need um, in order to remove these uh, retainer clips. There's a large and a small retainer clip and also a large and a small seal that comes out of there. Um, these won't be reused. I'll get new ones. These will be reused and then we'll get new bearings as well. These look like they possibly may have been replaced at one point, but um, I gotta press these out. And then um, after I'm done with that, we have to take the tire off and then unlace the wheel. And then this hub will be ready to go to the powder coater. So this is how you remove the bearings. You take a hardened steel socket um, that's just big enough to fit inside there and you can hammer it, or if you have a uh, shop press, you can press against here, and then that will press the shaft and the bearing out of the other end, or it should. Uh, you can use a little bit of heat, you can use lubricant to make sure everything's clean, make sure your retainer clips are out, and then once that's out, you can go from the other side and press this uh, bearing out. What I like to use, uh, once the other side is out is I actually like to use a large socket that sits up against this lip and then press it out or punch it out uh, very slowly. So I'm going to do this and I'm going to show you the components that are on the inside. All right, perfect time to talk about this, the Cush drive. The Cush drive sits in here and these rubber pieces, they cushion whenever you hit the throttle. This is the only cushion between two metals touching um, and then these are really tight. I'm not sure if they've been replaced. I did notice that the bearings appear to be aftermarket. Um, so somebody must have serviced this wheel at one point. So how it works is you have a bearing in here, and then you have the Cush drive. Then the Cush drive has a bearing. You can actually see that bearing right there. I'm about to press that out. And then there's two other bearings and a spacer. The spacer sits in the center of the wheel. There is a bearing on either side of this and then the cush drive itself also has a bearing on the outside. I'm gonna press this bearing out with a spacer and uh, we're gonna remove the cush drive bushings. In order to get the tire off, I broke the bead. Because this is a laced spoked wheel, um, there is an inner tube inside. I will be discarding that, they're old tubes. I don't like reusing tubes, so I don't really care about pinching them. I do have a mounting and balancing machine, however, I like to dismount the tire and then 
static hand balance everything on the bench. I'll be going through all that stuff once we're ready uh, to mount the new tires. So break the bead, I'm gonna throw this on here. I have special attachments that allow the wheel to be clamped and everything to clear down in here. Rim band is off, the inner tube is out, and the tire is off, and there is the wheel. Now you guys, if you've never worked with laced wheels, aka spoked wheels before, it's fairly simple. Um, there is a tool that you have to use in order to get those guys undone, and that's essentially the only thing that holds this spoke to the rim. All you have to do is put the tool right on the back here, and loosen each one of these until they come out. You'll see a threaded piece on the spoke. As soon as that's done, that spoke will pull out through here and out through there, and then that's pretty much it. All right, guys, so living in central PA, you'll have 80 degree sun shining weather, clear skies, and then this, five seconds later. Um, there's like a monsoon, 50 mile per hour winds coming, and it's pretty ridiculous. So I had some bikes sitting outside and I had to push them in really quick. Yeah, there goes the nice weather. So I'm probably gonna shut the garage door so I can continue filming in here. It's crazy. That's all I gotta say. Uh, rim is off, the spokes are still attached, and the hub is out. So essentially just pull each single one of these out, just like that. And uh, once that's out, then this and the Cush Drive um, assembly here, they can both be taken over to the powder coater. The hub assembly is completely off and everything is disassembled and removed in order for the powder coater to do its thing. I'm getting this done in a uh, matte black to match the wheels uh, that are being built. So this was a crucial thing to do. Um, as far as one of the first things in order for me to get the ball rolling on all the custom parts And that's it for today. I think I'm gonna end the video here um, It's storming pretty bad outside and the power was flickering a little bit and uh, I think I got enough done My initial plans were to swap out the oil cooler uh, Get rid of the damaged one and do a proper oil change and then see if I can get it at least fired up and moved around and make sure everything's good to go before I start to build. However, I already purchased all the stuff from Cognito Moto and they need that hub ASAP in order to build me my wheels so we can figure out um, the next step in getting the parts over here or maybe I'll go pick them up. If you guys enjoyed this episode, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and uh, we'll see you in the next one. If you wanna support, hop on over to www.dottomadeshop.com uh, where you can find cocktail smokers, whiskey and cigar stuff, this is just a couple of things you can find on a website. There's Dotto Made Garage, Dotto Made, and Campisi Customs. All of these are available for purchase on my website, so please go over there and support if you can.